I was tired of living the way I was living with like the, the secrets, I guess, and the guilt. I went to bed stressed. I woke up stressed. During the day, I was stressed thinking about money. That is all definitely changed. Tell me. For the better. By Thursday, I'll have zero credit card debt. What is that going to mean for you? The world is the first time I've said it like out loud, period, to anyone. Like not even like my therapist, I've talked about that with that much, but I'm doing it. You're doing Finally, it. Finally, you know, we're here, we're queer, ain't got nothing to fear. Welcome to my special update with Drew from my Netflix show, How to Get Rich. You're gonna find out what has changed since he appeared on the show. So if you haven't already finished it, please go do that right now. Now, all I knew about Drew when I met him was his name, and I had seen his financials. I didn't know anything else. And the producers had me show up in front of a bar and I was waiting outside. I heard the music playing. I said, okay, cool. I walk inside. There's a bunch of people sitting around having drinks. Cool. I said, this is a party bar. Great. Let's do it. But I didn't know who Drew was. I didn't know anything. Then I heard the music get really loud. Then I saw the dancers come out. I realized, okay, cool. This is a drag bar. But then I realized Drew was one of the dancers. So today you get to find out what has changed since Drew and I talked on the show. Let's watch. It's been a minute, almost, oh my God, almost here. I have so many questions. I follow you on social, but I also wanna know like the intricacies, financial, what was your experience like working together? I wanna know it all. Um, well, I'm sitting in my condo right now mm -hmm. in Chicago. Still at the same job. Well, because I think when we were um, working together, I had switched. I was getting ready to switch. Yep. So I'm still at um, the same place that that happened. Um, doing great. Still loving it. I'm still busy. Still making that money, honey. Um, Love it. So there's that, you know. We're almost now at a year being married. Love it. The 15th of, yeah, 15th of April will be our one year anniversary. Amazing. They're kind of a bunch of the same old, same old, but also very much not like in the head, you know, especially like, you know, with talking to Mikey about money yeah. or planning things and saving things. That has all definitely changed. Tell me. It, for the better. Yeah. So, and just we, uh, well, one, I'm making more money. So that's, mm. <laughs> that always helps. Yeah. Um, so like the biggest thing I've been working on this last year, um, which, you know, I've been working on keeping you up to is getting rid of that credit card debt. Cause I think yes. that was kind of just the biggest, the biggest one, the easiest one to fix right away, especially with, um, you know, just the discussing interest rates. Yeah. So it's kind of like, let's get this shit gone. I thought we met next week. So I was going to be like, oh, it's going to be gone. But are you ready for it? I'm ready. Thursday, by Thursday, I'll have zero credit card debt. Yes! My man! That is amazing! Yeah. Wait, okay. It's really fucking cool. Let's, let's talk about the importance of this, because when we met, that credit card debt was a huge secret. It was like yep. between you and Mikey, and it was causing a lot. Yeah. You guys were getting married. It was like a huge problem. <laughs> and then you paid it off 200 bucks a week? So 800 bucks a month you put towards that credit card debt. Oh my God. That's insane. Congratulations. What does it feel like to see the end coming by Thursday? Really good. Like it's proud. I'm really, really proud of myself for like buckling down. And what is that going to mean for you? The world. It's like the credit card debt became part of your mission, part of your identity. Yeah. And when you make it that, it becomes a lot easier to put money towards it. I was like, okay, credit card, we're not talking anymore. You know, we're on, we're on, we're on a break. And so I would just like make the payment. So I wasn't really paying attention to the balance so much because I knew it wasn't going up. I knew it was only going down. And then one day I saw, because I think the card was left at like 500. And, you know, I had a good shift at work or a good week. And I was like, I'm knocking this out. I'm like, you know, let's just, let's just get her done and put her away. That's awesome. What does Mikey say about it? Mikey's really, obviously, really excited, really proud. Um, of course, with him, because he's, you know, type A, always thinking. He's like, okay, great. So next we can work on this. He wants to go to the next, which is like me. I'm like, okay, great. What's next? And then a lot of people I've learned need to celebrate and take a second and say like, oh my God, look at what I accomplished. I feel like I'm more part of the team now, which, you know, was not how I felt when we first met. 
it's no surprise that you have absolutely crushed that debt. That's awesome. Thank you. One thing you notice about people who make huge changes with their life is that they confront it head on. It's quite amazing. You can make dramatic changes in your life when it comes to money, fitness, relationships within six months. But you'll notice that the people who do this tend to go all in. And that's exactly what Drew did. Now, of course, we're not all ready to do that. That's fine. There are parts of my life that I'm not going all in on. But I just want you to know that it is indeed possible. I think the biggest thing that I'm stuck on, but I've also done the most work on, I think in taking the most from our work together is the job search and the job hunt and just really like getting out of the industry. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's great that I'm making more money in the industry, but I don't want to be a server for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart to know when you've reached a limit in a certain industry and you're like, look, I could spend the next 10 years trying to eke out an extra 10% or I can just switch industries. So what's the, what's the progress on that? Have you been applying? Uh, I've been applying. Um, the, you, you should see, I should, I should have sent it to you. Like my resume is like night and day. That's exactly what you should do. Awesome job sticking with it. And the other thing I've used and twisted, oh, I'm not, I keep saying adapted. Twisted, Adapted, adapted, adapted. The other thing I've adapted is uh, the informational interviews. I've worked with the Chicago Board of Elections doing training. And so really figuring out, can I see myself doing this nine Smart. to five, Monday through Friday? It's almost like an internship yeah. with those in a way that I can like get that information, but I'm also making money doing it. Mm -hmm. do, you have a, do you have a deadline for yourself or is it open-ended right now? Um, it's open-ended, but obviously it is very much like the sooner, the better I'm making decent money now. So it's kind of sometimes easier to be like, ah, you know, no, I'm, you know, I'm good. Summer's great in Chicago for waiting tables. So I'm ready. Like, I can't let myself fall back on that. Well, yeah. you're going to make great money this summer. You can wait till the fall to start looking like, no, let's just yeah. get this done now. So in the fall, I have that, hopefully that, you know, nine to five. One thing that I'm hearing from you, this pattern is you are going from being reactive to proactive. You were reactive with your money when we first met. Then you got super proactive with paying the debt off and you saw the results. And my dream for you is to connect that feeling and that behavior with the job search. All right. So you'll keep me updated when you land the next job. Oh, absolutely. You'll probably be one of the first. It's, you'll probably be like second after Mikey. Okay, love it. What are you going to do w once you start making more money? What are you going to do with the additional income? Um, I get some more dogs. Is this a joke? <laughs> so before, when we first started talking, how much were you making? Uh, I was probably making, I think, thirty-five a year then. Thirty-five thousand a year. Thirty-five thousand, yeah. Okay, what are you making now? Um, uh, now this year, um. Uh, Oh, shit. I just looked. It was, I think it was 50. I was right about 50 this year. $50,000. What does that feel yeah. like? That felt was really good too. Like, and then again, it was kind of like, whoa, where's it been going? And it, I almost like went back to that old headspace of, well, you know, you're wasting money. You're not doing something. And I was like, wait, bitch, you have knocked down $5,000 in credit card debt. Yeah. That money hasn't gone nowhere. Yeah. It went, it went exactly where it needed to go. Like, a yes. fire hydrant, it went, or a fire hose, boom, straight to where it needed to go. Yeah. Now, I feel like since I have, I'm being able to contribute more financially to our trips, I feel like I can help make the calls more and be like, hey, I want to go do this. I want to see that. No, we're going to stay in this hotel because, you know, I want to. That's what happened. We just spent, you know, a week out in um, Palm Springs in Joshua Tree. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in the seven years we've been together, I planned the vacation. Like I found our Joshua Tree RV. We stayed with friends in Palm Springs, but then, you know, I was like, I found like what to do, what sites mm -hmm. to see. Like we, well, that was a combo. Like obviously he found some cool stuff too, but like for the most part, it was like, I took charge for most of the trip. I think I'm finally accepting, and you know, again, seven years later that Mikey and I are a team. In that, you know, this money at this point is, yes, exactly. It's our money. Ah, that is cool. Didn't you do that on the honeymoon? I remember you sent me a message like you were going to surprise Mikey with something on your honeymoon. 
Yeah, we did um, jet skiing. Awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just I was like, okay, I'm gonna plan something for the day. And we did it and it was super cool. It's amazing, you know, after seven years that you are uncovering this new layer of your relationship. I think that to me yeah. is the coolest part of the whole thing. You uncovered your own new layer. I can do this. I can make more. I can dedicate the money towards this and crush this debt in a year. Mm -hmm. And then also the coolest part is you're discovering this layer of your own relationship with your husband. Yeah. That's exactly why I did this show. That's why I did it. I'm glad you did. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. On this podcast, you've heard me recommend therapy to a lot of couples. Some of the couples are already seeing therapists, which I love. But if you wanted to get therapy, if you wanted to have a space where you and your partner could talk about money and any other topic, would you know where to go right now? No. A lot of us would search. We'd find a bunch of options, but how do we know who's right? How do we know what to do next? It can be overwhelming. So if you've been thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's online. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist after filling out a brief questionnaire. You can also switch therapists for no additional charge. One of the things that I love on this podcast is being able to help couples discover a new way of seeing and talking about money. But this is just one conversation. A lot of us need a lot more conversations in order to lock in change. That's why I think therapy is really important for a lot of us. My wife and I saw a therapist to help us deal with our early money conversations. And therapy gave us a place and a time to talk about how we felt. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Ramit today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Ramit, R-A-M-I-T. One of my favorite things to talk about is this concept of money dials, the areas where you love to spend money. The most common one is food. The next most common one is travel. And the third most common one, a top money dial, is health and wellness. Now, I get it. I spend a lot on certain areas of my life. For me, I love hotels. That falls under luxury. I love convenience. That falls under having my food delivered, etc. Health and wellness is something that a lot of us know is important. And what I want to do is encourage us to put time and money behind it. That's why I'm excited to partner with Ness, who I want to tell you about today. With the Ness card, you can earn 5x points on health and wellness spending at grocery stores, gyms, salons, pharmacies, restaurants, and 2x points on everything else. Then, just like you use travel card points for travel rewards, you can redeem the points from your Ness card for health and wellness experiences. This could be things like a Chipotle burrito to recovery gear to an all-inclusive retreat. In my own life, here are some areas where I spend money on health and wellness. I have a personal trainer. I get a weekly beard trim. I buy protein powder. And when I travel, I make sure to prioritize where I'm staying by how close it is to a good gym. Right now, Ness is offering a 50,000 point welcome bonus for members who spend $6,000 in the first 90 days, plus a $200 statement credit for healthy purchases. Ness has a special offer for I Will Teach You To Be Rich listeners, an extra 5,000 point welcome bonus when you use this specific link and you are accepted as a member. Here it is, nesswell.com slash Ramit. That's N E S S W E L L dot com slash R A M I T. Offer and benefit terms apply. Well, oh, I know you remember. I may have gotten scolded about having a savings account for my dog. Yes, I remember that. Account for me. <laughs> I've been waiting to ask you about that. Tell me, please. <laughs> well, well, you're going to love this part. Okay. Um, Daddy taking is, is taking some money back. Yes. And we are starting a Roth IRA for me with $2,000 seed money. Yes. From the GG account. Amazing. I mean, I love you, GG, but Drew, you need that <laughs> retirement account. That's yeah. awesome. I'm going to leave. I'm going to live longer than her. So I need it more. That's good. Listen, I'm not going to say anything more because I have a lot of people who watch this who love dogs. And I don't need to get. I, like of all the people who can get mad at me, I really do not need dog owners coming after me. So 
Oh God! Love you. Yeah, love dogs. <laughs> uh, but I'm especially happy that you're getting your investment account going. Now that you know the game, you start to see these connections. Like the fact that you paid that credit card debt off so aggressively and, and you saw results. Now, when you start to do the same thing with your investments and you start to see compounding, but just in the positive direction, you go, oh my God, I understand the game. That's how you win. Just a quick side note on this. I have a friend of mine who told me how she loves spending on her dog, but she struggles to spend on herself. I was like, what are you talking about? And then later I posted this thing that said, normalize spending as much on yourself as you do on your dog, which went totally viral. So that is dedicated to my friend, Monique. But you see this with tons of people. I've had moms on this show who will start crying about how they cannot spend on themselves because they feel so guilty, but they will spend anything on their children. I've had dads who are on this show and they describe themselves as providers. But when I ask them, what is your rich life for yourself? They're completely stumped. It's totally fine to be generous. It's even great to have that as a money dial, but not to the exclusion of yourself. Do you use the conscious spending plan in your like money conversations or at all? If not, that's also okay, but I'm just curious. Um, we keep talking about talking about it. First, it was the new job and trying to settle in. And then the same thing again with the struggle has been with my job, the ebb and flow, like, you know, July to December is fantastic. But then this last three months has been, yeah, you know, so like it's, it's very kind of conscious spending. To, it doesn't go out the window, but it kind of like gets thrown off. Let me offer a little bit of feedback. If you don't use it, that's okay with me. Okay. Not everybody successful with money has to use a conscious spending plan, yeah. but let me suggest a couple of things where I think it might be helpful for you right now. If you buy too much, it becomes something where you are now letting the tail wag the dog. In other words, every month you're sitting there writing a check for 300, 400, 500, whatever. And you go, why can't we go on this vacation? Why can't we eat out? Yep. So it really pays to get it right. So that's where I think a CSP can come in handy. You sound exactly like my husband. Because <laughs> that's pretty much everything he's already done. So you, you'd be very, you'd be giving him his gold sticker right now. Like, well... I want you to be on board. I actually, my dream, which you've already started to do, it's awesome, is for you to go to Mikey and be like, hey, you know what? I ran a few calculations. I don't know. Maybe I made a couple mistakes here or there, but here's how I'm seeing it. What do you think about that? And then you take Mikey's budget. You go, Mikey, fuck these numbers. You don't even calculate the TCO correctly. Get this out of here. Now, from <laughs> now on, we're using my numbers. Just make sure you throw up a camera on that so I can get a copy of that. Oh, absolutely. It's going to take time to become a true partner, but I am 100% confident in Drew, and I'm so proud of what he's accomplished. What surprised you most about the show? I think the emotional toll it took on me. Like, just, I think it was funny because it was for a lot of what was we, you and I talked about it, even Mike and I talked about it's the first time I've said it like out loud, period, to anyone. Like not even like my therapist, I've talked about that with that much. So, you know, I think that was because like that end of the first day, I was exhausted. I'm like, all I did was talk. By the end of it, I was like, I need a drink. Like I was tired of living the way I was living with like the, the secrets, I guess, and the guilt. And just, I went to bed stressed. I woke up stressed. During the day, I was stressed thinking about money. Like, you know, can I afford this? But then I think also how... Once you kind of started me on that path, how easy it was to follow and be like, okay, this this isn't that, you know, this isn't that scary. We can do this. We started internally. You talked a lot about how you felt and it was very emotional very quickly. And what I loved seeing was you went from that, the internal work, to the external work of like, I'm going to find out how much exactly I owe. I'm going to start putting money towards it. That debt started to get paid off. And then... Now you came full circle back to the internal work. Like you're talking about being a partner. You're talking about feeling like you are contributing and being proud, like full circle. And that is exactly how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Well, I was very proud to watch your journey. Looking back on our time together, what was your most memorable moment? Creating Cast Monet. <laughs> <laughs> that was too good. You really yeah. caught me off guard with that one.
Uh, tell everyone yeah. what that is in case they have not seen it. Cast money is your drag name. Um, if someday you decide to do drag, because um, you know that was is a part of my life. It's like it's one of my little joys. So I figured, oh yeah, that because that was it. We were talking joking. I was like, if you were making me do a solace work, I was going to make you do something too. Yeah, you threw it back on me. I was like, wait a second, I'm here to give the instructions, and then <laughs> you're like, ah, uh-uh. I was like, oh, okay, all right. So Cass is my wife, yeah. Cassandra. Yes, and so yep. you quickly identified what my drag name would be. Usually, it's like. Um, your first pet and the street you lived on, yeah. but you didn't have a pet. Correct. And then I remember your wife's name was Cass. And then because of money, like Cass money, it just sounds like too much like cash money. It's a little on the nose. Yeah. Cass Monet is a rich life. That's a rich drag queen. I love yeah. it. Okay. Recently on the show, you heard me speak to Jennifer and Andrew. They were struggling to pay off their credit card debt, but they had all these subscriptions. Look, if you love having all these subscriptions and you can afford it, I'm all for it. But a lot of times when people actually see all the subscriptions they've signed up for months or years ago, they realize they need to make a change because they could redirect where that money is going much more towards their rich life. If you're wondering where all your money is going, I want you to check out this episode's sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money will find the subscriptions you don't want, and then you can press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or emailing back and forth. That is convenience. I love it. Imagine finding an extra $50, $100, $200 per month by eliminating subscriptions you just forgot about. What could you do with that extra money? You could redirect it to things you actually care about, like an amazing dinner out with friends or investments, or you could use it to pay off debt even faster. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Ramit. That's rocketmoney.com slash R-A-M-I-T. Today's episode is sponsored by Element, a very tasty electrolyte drink mix. And I want to read you a response that I got from one of our readers who started using Element recently. His name, D, he wrote, you convinced me to try Element, and I'm pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoy it. The magnesium is really helpful for managing headaches and getting quality sleep, but it tastes so much better than I was expecting given the salt factor. This will be my new go-to for workout recovery and the blistering Florida summer heat. Well, first of all, I love hearing about your feedback with our sponsors. We are very selective about who we work with, so thank you for keeping the feedback coming, and I absolutely love hearing your responses about Element. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. If you're sweating or feel dehydrated and you want to replace your electrolytes, consider Element. They have eight great flavors like citrus salt, watermelon salt, raspberry salt, and even lemon habanero. Right now, Element is offering eight single-serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Ramit. Try it totally risk-free, and if you don't like it, they'll give you your money back, no questions asked. You have nothing to lose. This deal is only available through my link. Let me give it to you again, drinklmnt.com slash R-A-M-I-T. That's drinklmnt.com slash Ramit. Anything that you want to share that you didn't get a chance to share on the show? Any questions you have for me? I mean, we talk frequently, so it's not like you've been bottling something up, I don't think. But I want to make sure you have that chance. It's like significantly less scary and easier to navigate and be like, okay, yes, here's how I can make it work. You know, when I was making $30,000, now I'm making 50, like the language is still the same. But I'm doing it. But I'm doing yeah, it. You're doing Finally, it. Finally, you know, we're here. We're queer. Ain't got nothing to fear. There you go. Well, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'm so excited to see your story go live. You really represent millions of people who want to do the right thing. Maybe grew up not really talking about money, not really engaging with money. And 
you are an amazing example for people that when they take control of their money, they really can start living a rich life fast. That is pretty much all I hoped for when I first started thinking about doing this Netflix show. I met Drew. He was very stressed out by money. He was keeping uh, credit card debt, thousands of dollars of credit card debt as a secret from his fiance, Mikey. They were soon to be married. And Mikey knew that Drew avoided money. He represents a lot of people who didn't really grow up being taught about money, who work in different jobs. Not everybody works at Google. Drew is a server and he's acknowledged he likes it, but he needed to change to make more money. Now he's making 50K and he wants to get out of the industry. And what is amazing in catching up with Drew is that he's made a plan to pay off his debt. He's continued doing it for a year. He's days away from being completely credit card debt free. And my favorite part of all is that he and Mikey are talking now more as partners. They're creating their money rules together. All that's fantastic. That's where money can really change your life. It's not simply about dollars and cents in a spreadsheet, but it's about how you talk to your partner. If I had to give Drew some constructive feedback, it would be take that same energy that you use to pay off your debt and redirect that to finding that new job. In the same way that your life changed when you went from making 30K to 50K and it gave you so much breathing room and confidence, that same thing will happen when you switch industries and you're able to make more and be respected by the people that you work with and your boss. I think that will be fantastic. The other constructive feedback I would give is to start using the conscious spending plan. I didn't push too hard because it's really up to them. Drew's a great example of everyone going at their own speed. To me, it doesn't matter if debt takes you six months to pay off, two years, et cetera. But the fact that he made steady progress is incredible. If you can do that, then you can truly live a rich life. So congratulations, Drew. And for everybody who has seen Drew and the other cast on the show, How to Get Rich is on Netflix now. And thank you for watching here. Now head on over to Netflix and watch the entire show. I'm going to say this now so I can appease my husband. When people watch the show and see our horrible art on our walls, that was because we had to make it ourselves to have something on the walls for the show. Otherwise, it was all going to be blurred out. And he is so pissed. <laughs> He's like, people are going to be saying things about our art. I was like, okay, and even if they do, we're the ones on Netflix, bitch, not them.